Hello everyone and welcome back to Coach Craig Sports. Today's going to be a little bit different video and it's going to be my top 10 wide receiver prospect rankings for the 2021 NFL Draft. Like I've been promising you guys for a little while now, this video is going to be that. This video is going to be based on how I view these players as prospects right now, based on the film I watched, based on like kind of where they're at right now. Not trying to predict future value, just a little bit harder to do that overall. So with that being said, we'll get started with number one, and that's Devonta Smith. And most of you watching this are probably going to be like, wait, 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 wait. You don't have Jamar Chase as number one? Well, I got Devonta Smith. I think he's the most pro-ready wide receiver out of this class. He's one of the most polished wide receivers we've seen in quite some time come out. Obviously, he could have came out last year. He probably would have been a late first-round pick, early second-round pick. Decided to go back to school. Really showed out this year. I know some people will knock him and be like, oh, he did so well just because Jalen Waddle got hurt or whatever, or he's force-fed and stuff like that. Not too worried about that. The dude was still the first wide receiver to win the Heisman since Desmond Howard, which happened over 20 years ago. So obviously he is a very, very special player. Devonta Smith's 22 years old, obviously a four-year senior since he did come back for his senior season. We'll start off with the things he does well overall, though. So he's a very, very, very good route runner. He it's not even close. He's the best route runner in this class overall. If you look back to last year's class, people said Jerry Judy was the best route runner out of that class. I argue he's better than Jerry Judy. Jerry Judy might look, make it look fancier, but you watch Devonta Smith, and like you just watch his head as he runs. He doesn't turn his helmet. He doesn't tip you off to where he's going. Like He'll come at you, and you have no idea where he's going. And as a defensive back, that's scary as all get out. He has incredible release off the line. People, you know, have concerns about his size. Oh, he's going to get pressed at the NFL level. Nobody was able to press him in college because he's so quick off the line. He's got that clean release, kind of like a Devontae Adams does for the Green Bay Packers. Then he has good speed. A lot of people act like he's not a fast player by any means, but he's able to get deep on you. He's able to run past you on slant routes. He's able to run... He's a lot faster than people actually realize. If you go back to even his high school days when he was running track, his 100-meter dash is up there with some of the fastest wide receivers in this year's draft class. So it's not like he's slow by any means. He has incredible hands. Rarely, rarely, rarely had a drop. This year, maybe two, I think it was. Like It's just crazy how good his hands are. He is very good at attacking the ball. He does have a long wingspan that helps him do that as well. He's not afraid to go out and get the ball, which is a trait that I value quite a bit overall. Then the one real concern, honestly, is the weight with him. You could say coming back, being a senior and all that too, but the weight's probably the biggest one. He's 166 pounds from the medical combine in Indianapolis. So there are some concerns with that. There have been guys that play a little bit lighter than they probably were listed to Chad Johnson, Marvin Harrison. So it's not like it hasn't quite happened before, but it's just kind of an outlier. And I think he's one of those guys that could be that outlier. Then we move down to number two and it's Jamar Chase, a little bit bigger receiver, you know, you know, maybe an inch taller than Vonta Smith, a little bit thicker, obviously. So we're not concerned about size with him by any means. But he's the guy that could be the best wide receiver out of this class, you know, when we look back three years from now. But I think both these guys, one and two, they're my tier one, no question about it. Jamar Chase, he does have that strength. He plays strong. He can high point the ball. He can attack the ball in the air. He does all those things very well. There's not too much that he's not very good at. Like on tape in 2019, you know, we knew he was decently fast, but not like good speed. You thought it was just kind of slightly above average. He comes out, runs a sub 4-4 four, four at, at the LSU Pro Day, so he has better speed than we thought. Maybe it got a little bit better since, you know, he opted out for the 2020 season. And that's the only really concerns I have for him is that 2020 opt-out and a little bit with his route running, too. He's kind of been an average route runner. He's still getting better at it. It looks like um, at his Pro Day he got a little bit better from 2019 to 2020 as well, but it's something that you can definitely improve over time, so... Not many concerns with him. Should be a very good player overall at the NFL level. Number three, we got Tylen Wallace at Oklahoma State. And people are going to be freaking out about this one. Wait, you got Tylen Wallace this high? Well, Tylen Wallace, if he didn't tear his ACL and he came out in last year's draft after having two very, very productive seasons at Oklahoma State, he would have been in that group with Brandon Ayuk, Chase Claypool, T. Higgins, Michael Pittman Jr., you can throw Denzel Mims in that group too. He would have been in that group where he would have been probably a late first round pick, early second round pick. 
He was up in that class. So he comes back this year. Look at all the names on this list. Would you compare guys like Brandon Newyuk? Where would you put them in this list? I think Tylen Wallace definitely deserves to be up, you know, this three, four spot. Came back this year after that ACL injury, proved kind of the doubters wrong that thought maybe it told him back a little bit. Had a very good season. Opted out towards the end, though, too, just uh, because he proved everything he needed to prove already at that point in the season. But he'll be 22 in May. The pros for him, he has incredibly strong hands. He's very good at attacking the ball. These top three guys at least have the strongest hands. And in terms of attacking the ball, they're the best at it in this class by far. He has a great ability to high point the ball. He has good body control. He's an above average route runner. It's something that a lot of people don't actually give him credit for. They're like, oh, he just ran go routes and slant routes at Oklahoma State. He actually had a little bit of ability to do run pretty much every route in the route tree. He showed it at the senior bowl. It was arguably the best route runner there. Him and probably Dwayne Eskridge were at the top two there. So I don't have any concerns about his route running. It's only going to get better with the pros. So the cons kind of are, he has, we'll call it average speed. He ran like a 4.48, 4.51, just kind of depending on which site you believe for uh, his pro day at Oklahoma State. So not bad speed by any means. That's kind of like, you know, CD Lamb range from last year. And I don't think anybody in the world is calling CD Lamb slow. So why should people be acting like Tylen Wallace isn't fast or is slow or anything like that? Has the ability to play on the inside and the outside, mainly played at the outside on Oklahoma State. Had a little bit of issues with press coverage at times, but, you know, kind of bulked up. Lost an inch at his pro day technically, but I don't see it being a problem at the NFL level overall. And then that injury concern towards ACL. His twin brother actually had three ACL tears and was forced to medically retire from football. So that's a little bit of concern there. Uh, probably the only thing that was holding me back initially with Tylen Wallace. But, you know, if you look into it, there's not a lot of research done to see uh, if ACL tears are gene- genetic or you're more likely to have them based on your genetics. But there is potentially a slight predisposition, but it doesn't mean that once you tear it, you're just going to keep on tearing it over and over and over again or anything like that. So I don't really have any concerns about that long-term or any long-term effects like that. Then we get down to number four, and that's Jalen Waddle. He is 22 years old out of Alabama. He's kind of old for a junior, declaring, honestly. You know, I put a tweet out about this probably a week ago where I said, if your model is pumping up Jalen Waddle for being a three-year guy and declaring for the NFL draft, and boosting Tylen Wallace down, your model is doing it wrong because Tylen Wallace is six months younger than Jalen Waddle. So that does play a factor in it too. Depending on how you do breakout age, uh, if you look at like the one on player profiler, Jalen Waddle technically didn't have a breakout year in terms of how some people calculate breakout age as well. Had some early production though, so not a major concern there. But you know, he's a guy, his game's all about speed. Henry Ruggs that came out last year, you know, ran super, super fast. Him and Jalen Waddle used to race, and supposedly it was neck and neck. So Jalen Waddle, probably a guy that runs in the low four threes, maybe high four twos. We just don't know because there is no pro day data about that. You know, he did, obviously did break his ankle last year. It's still be interesting to see if there's any lingering long-term effects from that or not. See if he has any other injury concerns going forward. He actually measured in like an inch shorter at his Alabama pro day, which... Not a major concern, but it's still, you know, it's something. Uh, He has the ability to actually high point the ball fairly well for his size, though. But probably, you know, with the cons, you're looking at a guy. He's not the biggest guy in the world. He's probably going to be a slot only, can play a little bit on the outside, but probably mainly going to be a slot guy at the NFL level. So that kind of limits his ceiling a little bit. Just really depends on where he ends up in the NFL. And then, like I said, a little bit of those injury concerns, and he's an old junior at 22 years old. So then we'll get down to number five. That's Rondell Moore. This is a player that I've liked a lot for a long time. Obviously, if you guys have been following college football for a while, 2018 Rondell Moore, best freshman season pretty much like ever for a wide receiver. Destroyed Ohio State. Go if you want to have a fun time. You enjoy watching football highlights, stuff like that. Just watch Rondell Moore against Ohio State in 2018. 2019 plays he's he's doing decently well gets hurt he probably would have tore his acl supposedly if his legs weren't so strong uh, based on the position that he was in when he got injured so ended up hurting his hamstring kind of 
lingered into the beginning of this year. The Big Ten didn't know if they were going to play, so initially it was an opt-out, and then some of the other opt-outs opted back into the season. So then he kind of followed suit, played a couple games, you know, had a good amount of catches, short yardage, a little bit of yak, stuff like that, but then he opts out again. So some people think there are some injury concerns with him. I don't really think it's going to be a major concern because there is just that one injury. We'll we'll keep going with the cons here because the other one obviously is going to be the size. We thought he was five foot nine, checked in at five foot seven. There's not a long history of NFL wide receivers at five foot seven or shorter having a lot of success at the NFL level. But you know this could be the outlier. You know the NFL game is always changing a little bit and adapting too. He's a very dynamic playmaker. He's a guy that's super super fast. Ran a sub four three. Good short area quickness. Good agility. A guy that was mainly used in the slot, mainly used on kind of some gadget plays, some short getting him the ball in space, doing stuff like that. How does that translate over the NFL level? I think if you have the right head coach, play caller, it's not going to be an issue. I think he's more of a deep threat than people are wanting to give him credit for. And this dude is just a monster. He didn't actually do the bench for his pro day, but I think he did 22, 23 reps afterwards just to prove, you know, that he can do it supposedly he had been squatting like 600 pounds for a guy that's five foot seven 181 pounds dude just like built like an ox and it's crazy honestly so i don't have any concerns about anything like that just kind of be interesting to see how he translates to the nfl level and then one last thing with rondell moore too is he is actually a very good returner too. I think if an NFL team takes him in the NFL draft, you have to use this man on punt return. It's another way to get him out on the field. Very dynamic, very good in space. You know, he's really going to help your punt return game week one. And you can say the same thing about Jalen Waddle as well. He's a very good punt returner, very good kick returner as well. So those two guys back to back, they're very good at that and they can help your team out in that regard. And it's a way to get them on the field early. Then at number six, we have Rashad Bateman, and this is probably going to be controversial too. Like, There's so many people out there that love Rashad Bateman. I just don't see it. Coming into his pro day, we thought he was like 6'2", like 210 pounds, checked in at 6 foot, 190 pounds, supposedly never played above a, you know, 198. So I don't know where we were getting that other weight from, but somebody was pumping it up. He's an interesting guy. I don't want to say he's bad by any means. Like The fact that he's at six doesn't mean he's a bad wide receiver. If he was a bad wide receiver, I have him at 46. So I think he's a guy that could be a good number two wide receiver at the NFL level. He's got good route running skills. He has decent speed. I thought he would run probably closer to like 446, 45, somewhere in that range. He ran a 443, so that definitely helped boost his stock a little bit. He's a guy that really understands zone coverage well. So, like, when he's going against zone, you know, find a spot, find a seam in the zone, and he's really good at doing that. So that's something that is very valuable at the NFL level. It'll be interesting to see if he's used on the slot or on the outside because this year he played a lot more in the slot. And I think with that zone coverage and everything like that, he might be a guy that maybe does a little bit better in the slot. just depends on what team takes him. He can definitely play on the outside as well. But with him, some of the cons that I do have, you know, his hands, you know, some people say he has good hands. He had a lot of concentration drops this year. Doesn't quite have the strongest or softest hands in the world for me either. So he has the chance to be a good wide receiver too. I don't think he's ever going to be that wide receiver one mold that you look for. He just doesn't go after the ball in the air. He doesn't attack it like the guys at the top do. Devonta Smith, Jamar Chase, Tylen Wallace. When the ball's up in the air, they're going and getting it. I don't see that very often with Rashad Bateman. He's kind of letting the ball come to him. And if I want an alpha wide receiver, I want wide receiver one. I want to know when I throw the ball up to him, he's going to go get it. So uh, like I said, just a guy that's probably going to be a good wide receiver too for a long, long time. I think a lot of people are trying to make him Allen Robinson and he's not Allen Robinson. And he's never going to get as many targets as Allen Robinson does. So he's not going to be somebody that you're going to use in a wide receiver one role in fantasy either. Then we move down to number seven and it's Amon Ross St. Brown. And he's a lot closer to Rashad Bateman than a lot of people want to think or give credit for. They are very, very similar players. They both can play on the outside. They both can play on the inside. Now that we kind of measured them up, they're almost the same size, almost the same weight. So it's not too big a difference between the two. 
everybody thinks Rashad Bateman's a guaranteed first round pick in the NFL draft. I don't think that's a guarantee. I think both these guys could definitely go in round two. And there's not that big a difference between the two, like I've already said. The major thing is Rashad Bateman's a little bit faster. You could say maybe a Monroe St. Brown, he's a very good route runner as well. Maybe he's a little bit better route runner. There's things that I do like about a Monroe St. Brown, probably even better than Rashad Bateman. He's got good body control. He's able to go up and adjust to the ball in the air. He doesn't quite attack it like some of these other guys do, but he's able to make adjustments in the air. He is actually a very willing blocker too. So that's something that you look for out of your wide receiver where he's playing on the outside, playing in the slot. I think, you know, his brother's on the Green Bay Packers. I think he'd be a good fit there as well. Kind of playing inside, outside, kind of like the move Devonta Adams around a bunch as it is already. Some of the same issues was Bateman had, though, some concentration drops. And then the only other thing wrong with him is he's got average speed. You know, he ran in the 4.5s, 4.51, 4.54, just depending on which site you refer to. So that's a little bit of a concern there, but I think he's a guy that can still have a very good career at the NFL level, probably more likely a wide receiver, too, than anything. I think he's a guy that's probably getting knocked down a little bit too, just because of how his brother's career has gone in the NFL too with the Packers. He's obviously a lot more talented than his brother, not quite as big as him, but a very, very good player overall. Had three years of production at USC, and it's not like he was playing with nobody there. His Michael Pittman Jr., Tyler Vaughns, London Drake or Drake London. I can't remember which way his name goes, but he's very good there too. He's He was there last year. He'll be back this year as well. Definitely a lot of competition there for targets. So the fact that he did produce on a consistent basis is something that shouldn't be overlooked, honestly. Then we move down to number eight, and that's Elijah Moore out of Ole Miss. He's 21 years old. He actually ran a 4.35 at his pro day. So a little bit quicker than I thought he would have been. Thought he would have been like the 4.4s, but 4.35, great time for him overall. Things he does well, you know, he's got really good hands probably not the top like one two three guys in the class but you know probably like fourth fifth something like that very good hands overall soft hands he's got that speed he's got that a little bit of that shorter quickness not quite as explosive as somebody like a Rondell Moore so when I look at these two players and compare them some people like Elijah better some people like Rondell better I think Rondell Moore can be Elijah Moore with more juice essentially he's got a little bit more oomph to his game uh, so he's an above average route runner. He flashes good route running at times, not always quite all the time though. Some of the cons, you know, the size five foot nine, 175 pounds, not the biggest guy in the world, probably only going to be a slot player at the NFL level. Some people think he can play on the outside. I just don't quite see it there. Honestly, you know, he was a decent deep threat at times for Ole Miss. When you watch some of the games, when he's Going against press coverage, he had a tendency to struggle against that. So I think that relegates him more to the slot than anything. And if he goes against a slot corner that's pressing him, it's going to be real interesting to see how he adjusts to that at the NFL level. And then last thing, you know, Ole Miss's offense is kind of based around him. So was it just because he was that good or everybody else wasn't quite that good? You know, there was a lot of plays designed to get him open, get him into space and have success. So some of his success is from him and some of it's from that too. So I think he might be a little bit overrated in a way, but definitely an interesting wide receiver overall. If you're playing in like a PPR league, definitely could have some value as well. And then he is a guy that can also do a little bit of, you know, punt returning as well. You know, watching the film, I wasn't too excited about it. I think Jalen Waddle, Rondell Moore, guys like that. There's some other guys that aren't in the top 10 that are going to be a little bit better punt returners too as well. I don't think it's going to be something – He's going to do at the NFL level, but he has the ability to do it at least. So in a pinch, they can always throw him back there. Then we move down to number nine, that's Kadarius Toney. You know, he's a little bit similar to Elijah Moore, a little bit bigger though. So Kadarius Toney is six feet tall, 22 years old. He came into Florida as a quarterback in high school. They kind of worked him around wide receiver, running back, just trying to find a real position for him. So he had some limited production, and part of the reason was because of that. I think it's something that's kind of getting overlooked. I'm not, you know, some people really like Kadarius Tony. Some people really hate him, mainly the analytics people that hate him because, you know, a late breakout, not a lot of production, everything like that. But he still had the production this year. His film's pretty good, honestly, overall, but, you know, just the things about him that are good. He's an above average route runner. He does this really weird thing where he runs, he'll run an out route 
and then he'll come back in. Instead of just going out and then back in like most players do, he'll go out, he'll do a spin route move, and then he'll then he, as he's coming back in. It's really weird. I've never seen anything like it before, but he did it like at least three times on film. So it's something that shows that he's athletic when he does that, but I don't know how NFL coaches are going to like that. Maybe it's going to be something they work out of his game. I would assume so, but who knows? It's just very, very interesting overall. Uh, he does have that short area quickness. He had the long speed with the 439 at his pro day, so it was a little bit faster than I thought he was going to run. And he's actually a decent blocker for his size, you know, not the biggest guy in the world, but at least willing to block and a decent blocker overall. So that's definitely good for him. The cons are the limited production and then his hands. He has been known to have some drops, especially at the senior bowl. There's a lot of good with Kadarius Tony. There's a lot of bad. It kind of depends where he lands in the NFL. I think a team that has, you know, a pretty good offensive coordinator or a head coach calling plays, definitely going to have an ability to use him. I could see him in any role like a Debo Samuel. Obviously, he's not quite as thick as Debo Samuel, but, you know, running some jet sweeps, running across the middle, getting some yards after the catch, stuff like that. You know, just a very dynamic player that you have to find different ways to get him involved in the game. And he's also a guy, you know, that can do some returning as well. Probably a little bit better than Elijah Moore. Probably not quite as good as Rondell Moore or uh, Jalen Waddle, but still a decent returner overall. So I don't think it's, you know, I don't think if you use him in that way, it's going to be a bad thing at the NFL level by any means. Then last but not least, we have Terrace Marshall Jr. And he is one of, you know, your traditional alpha big body wide receiver that you're looking for in the NFL draft. He ran a little bit faster at his pro day than I probably thought he would have. You know, initially it was in the four threes, but officially it came out as a four, four, three. Uh, So he's going to be 21 in June. So he's actually really young, you know, big time recruit coming out of high school. Kind of feels like a guy that really coasted on talent for me too. Cause you see the flashes there, you know, the quickness, the going up and getting the ball at times. It's just not always there with him things that are really good for him he has that traditional size that you look for in a big body you know prototypical one wide receiver he's got decent speed he's got decent hands he's got decent body control he's got everything you want in a wide receiver but he's just not always there like the kind you know the the things that aren't really well with him route running is very very hit or miss he rounds off his routes a lot of the time kind of has a little bit of laziness to his game, you know, especially when the ball's not going his way, he tips the play off that it's not coming his way. So like that laziness, consistent effort, it's not always there, not very good blocker. And now with some of the medicals coming out, there's a little bit of concerns with that. I'm not exactly sure the details on that, but he's a very polarizing prospect. Some people are very, very high on him. Some people are very low on him. I feel like number 10 is just right for me for him. He could move up a couple spots depending on draft capital, but I think he's a guy that has a ton of talent. You know, if he ends up on the right team with the right offensive coordinator, with the right head coach, with the right wide receivers coach, they can tap into that talent that he has. I know a popular landing spot is the Baltimore Ravens, and I think that would be a great spot for him because they have T. Martin as their wide receivers coach now, and he's worked with a lot of these wide receivers at USC. Helping guys like Juju Smith-Schuster, helping guys like Am- Amandra St. Brown, Michael Pittman Jr. Some of these guys that have come out and you know been pretty decent prospects. And actually his son is Amari Rogers, so I wouldn't be surprised if he ends up there either. So T. Martin, very, very underrated wide receivers coach, making the jump from college to the pro level. I think that's definitely a good spot for Terrace Marshall Jr., there's some other spots that could actually be pretty good as well, but I think he needs somebody that can really work with him, develop his game, and take his game to the next level. Whether or not he wants to do that may be another question as well. But overall, these are my top 10 wide receivers for the 2021 NFL Draft class. You know, with the quarterback and the running back video, you know, it seemed like there's more players that I left out that consensus may be a little bit higher on that I haven't, you know, that I didn't talk about in my video. I feel like this top 10 for the wide receivers, it's pretty close to like what you see there from most people. Uh, the order is obviously a little bit different, but in general, you kind of see the, most of these 10 wide receivers floating around in there. You might see a couple other names up in there, you know, Diami Brown out of North Carolina. He's a guy that really reminds me of like a Nelson Aguilar type player, not real too high on him. Not as high as some people, at least. You might see other names like Seth Williams, who I'm really, really low on. Tamari and Terry sometimes floats up in there. 
A lot, a lot of question marks with him. Dwayne Eskridge is in there, you know, a speed guy, but he's played at Western Michigan, 24 years old already. There's a lot of guys that could kind of sneak into the top 10 on different people's list, but not ones that I'm really looking at considering too much overall. Like I've been saying, you know, I already did my quarterback rankings, my running back rankings. Now this is my wide receiver rankings. I'll be doing the top 10 tight end prospect rankings, you know, in the next couple of days as well. And then one of the videos that I do want to put out is going over some of the sleepers in this year's draft class that people aren't really looking at. And I talked about a couple of them over on the Point After podcast yesterday on the True North Fantasy Football Network. So if you guys haven't checked out that out already, definitely would recommend doing so. If, if you go down in the description below, there's the True North Fantasy Football YouTube page. Click on that link. should be like one of the first videos, if not the first video up there already, where we went through a two-round super flex mock draft and then afterwards i went into a couple of my deep dive sleeper players for the 2021 nfl draft class so definitely check that out definitely would recommend following the extra point podcast he's on twitter and his podcast is typically on friday nights i think he'll be doing saturday this week once again just because of the nfl draft we're going to be having that nfl draft stream on the true north fantasy football uh, network obviously I'll be on there part of the night on day two of the NFL draft, so rounds two and three, so definitely be sure to check that out. And then, like I said, with the running backs and the quarterbacks, feel free to leave your top 10 wide receivers down in the comments below. Definitely interested to see who you have there, kind of your orders. It'll be real interesting to see. I think some of these orders are going to change a little bit for fantasy football, you know, once we find out landing spots and everything like that too. But um, just keep in mind, talent is a major factor as well. There's people that really liked A.J. Brown going in the draft he went to Tennessee and then everybody kind of faded him still very talented wide receiver we've seen that now but that's pretty much all I have for today's video if you guys are new to my channel please consider subscribing definitely would appreciate it definitely helps build the community that we're trying to build here at Coach Craig Sports and that's truly one for you the viewers helping you guys with your fantasy football teams helping you guys with your DFS whether it's NBA or NFL talking all the different football news this offseason especially regarding the NFL draft like this video. Uh, I'm going to be doing the top 10 tight end video like I already said, and then some draft sleepers headed into the NFL draft. Once the NFL draft is over, I will be also reviewing some of the picks. Probably I'll either do a round by round or team by team and probably do the team by team. If I do that, it, that way I'll do by divisions, just try to split it up, you know, to, to like eight videos. So it doesn't take 32 videos up and you guys are having to click on each one, but very excited about the NFL draft this season. Very good group of prospects. And I'm excited to see where everybody lands, honestly. But with that being said, that's all I have for today's video. Hopefully you guys all enjoy. Hopefully your favorite NFL team drafts some of these prospects I've talked about or some of the ones that you really like as well. Definitely going to be a fun, fun time. And then last but not least, want to give a special shout out to each and every one of you watching today's video. Truly do appreciate you taking the time out of your day to watch this video. You definitely could be doing something else, but joining me here today, watching my top 10 wide receiver prospects for the 2021 NFL draft, you know, it really truly does mean a lot to me. And I hope each and every one of you has a great rest of your day.